Hey, we are back. And you know, as I mentioned, as I promised, that the month of October, we are going to be looking at our education system, the products that we produce from this education system that we have, uh, but also the impact in the workplace. You know, a lot of our young people are really suffering in the, in the workplace. And some of them, of course, they're thriving, they're doing very well, but we have the majority of them that are really struggling. Uh, my name is Matsileng Mohodi, and today I am with the gorgeous Nani Wemakatuk. I get was introduced, Nani. And thank you so okay. much for. Thank you. Uh, how can I even top that? I'm not trying to look gorgeous, as you say, gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks, Madeleine. Um, yeah, he's introducing. I'm a neuroscience coach, um, but more than anything, I like Ubuti uh, Ngale Ubuti. I am uh, a soul, like many souls, that is out here seeking to expand itself in many ways. I'm in a journey of life uh, that started years back. <laughs> And uh, I've met awesome beings like yourself and many others that have just become my community and we're doing this life together. And all the labels then come uh, after that. Uh, I'm a mother, I'm a neuro coach, uh, I'm a businesswoman. We say entrepreneur now, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, and yeah, really a scholar of life. Yeah, because, you know, um, I mean, we've had a lot of conversations and one of the things about you is that, you know, you don't have to say a lot, um, but there is something about you. And, and obviously that comes from something. Um, what I know is that, I mean, for, for all these years that I've known you, you bring this calmness with you. Um, even obviously everybody has got challenges, but yeah. you manage just slide through it and you just live your life. So um, we had a conversation where I really loved what you said about the types of things that you know can empower, especially the young people, as they navigate their way from being students in a university or from high school into the workplace. Because as you know, there's a lot of bullying, there's a lot of frustrations about experience, about not knowing what the environment is going to bring. So what are those kinds of things that you would advise young people? Uh, you know, I talk to young people like, as old as ah, time is up. So, what so, so I wanted to come in right there mm. and say, you know, the young person you're talking about lives in and through all life, if you don't deal with certain things at your, long age, at your younger age, they always manifest even as you grow older. So the young person is still there and needs to be addressed. We carry traumas. Yes. We carry a lot of traumas and they keep resurfacing because we don't deal with them. And of course, that's another segment uh, that we will have, uh, inshallah. God allowing, um, but we carry a whole lot of things. So even us uh, uh, oldies and those who are older than us um, do need these tools to be able to redress issues that keep res resurfacing and, and be able to move through life with much ease, yeah. So, so what can we do? So, um, you know, the normal thing is you finish university or tertiary or whatever training that you, you're getting and you are fortunate enough to get a job, but there are so many frustrations at work. You know, workplace also bring its own challenges like bullies and you know, not understanding the work and, and just a lot of abuse. So what are the kinds of things um, that we can use to really help people to align themselves 
with what is going to happen? Because I love the fact that you say you workshop your mornings. What does that mean? Yes. What does that well, mean? What I can tell you now. Had I not started this, this practice, yeah, morning workshop, my morning workshop, uh, this is years back now, and I've gotten better and better at it. Had I not started that, I'm yes. not, I don't know where I would be. Hmm. Uh, precisely because of the challenges that you have mentioned, one, and also having just dealt with a lot of trauma in my life that shows up in everything. <laughs> you, like know, in your, you mean your own personal life where you've gone through some traumas, but yes. because of the yeah, okay. Because of the of the of the morning workshops that I have with myself, mm -hmm. that has been, you know, you don't throw things under the carpet. You literally yeah. say, okay, hello, uh, adversity at work or yes. trauma or whatever. Yes. Okay, so let's deal with it. What, what you mm -hmm. know, and bit by bit, there's no longer space for trauma to show up and trauma keeps disappearing and it's gone because then there's nothing to hold on to. You're dealing with, with this, uh, the bully aspect in your morning uh, workshop. You're dealing with, yeah. but here's the thing that's most important before we go far, uh, uh, Matsuling. You cannot fix anything outside of you. Please say that again. You because cannot. we normally we normally look outside for solutions. You cannot ever fix anything outside of you. You can go to work with your boss being muzzling, who's completely um, brutal, unfair, unkind, and just almost feels like she hates you. Mm. Can I tell you? something you can go to work and say today i'm going to tell her off that doesn't fix anything that doesn't fix muddling it depletes from you instead or you can say you will never be able to fix any situation around you from outside of you it always has to come from within this is why the morning rituals the workshop if you want to have it that yeah. way. This is why it is so important because you are dealing with you. Yes. It is, it is the work that you do within yourself to anchor yourself so yeah. that as you walk out and start your day, nothing yes. can, no one can pull a rug under your feet. Nothing can just happen by coincidence. Nothing, you are anchored. You are good. So what, what kinds of those meditations, what, what are you talking about? I mean, if you say yeah. you're preparing yourself, um, different people have got different rituals. And yes. you know, the part is when we continue with certain rituals or no rituals and life still doesn't work. So what are those kinds of rituals that you're talking about? Is it like what are you doing? What are those? Every morning. <laughs> Yeah, Anasi, can I like the queen of calm? You know, you're always like calm. No, 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 you know. I must. Um, in, in fact, I need to disclose that uh, I am no master of anything. I am also in a journey. I'm, I'm pretty much a sage, like any other. But as we learn, we, we. Yes. We, we teach and we share the information to make the world a better place for all of us, you know? So um, yes, there are rituals and you will find someone saying, oh, I pray every morning at 3 a.m. I wake up and I pray, but this thing is not going away. Uh, or every morning before we leave, I call the kids, we hold hands and we pray, but I still walk into this situation. I feel, you know, I feel defeated, depleted as soon as I walk into that office and all that. So prayer is good. But praying to whom and how? 
we most of the time we sabotage our own prayers, you know, in many ways. But most importantly, what is your relationship to the one you are praying to? Are you praying to someone who's up in the sky <laughs> or anything? So you need to fix when we speak of alignment, uh, we are spirits, spiritual beings, because when we die, this just dies and loses form and everything, but right. your spirit lives on. And thus we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Now, what is alignment to your inner being? Alignment to your inner being is literally in simplistic, in a very simplistic way, I'd say synchronizing yourself to the mission of your inner being. Literally, just, just tuning in to God, if you want to put it like that, within you. Uh, tuning in to whatever superpower that you need to stop and tune in. So that when you walk, you know you have fully surrendered your thoughts in the way that you would say, or whatever. You have fully surrendered it all to say, you know what? Uh, I am pulling back as me, inner being, God, just literally, literally uh, guide me. So you are in tune with your inner being your source, I your believe essence, in source you, and the, real, the real you, and we all have that, and, and that is God that resides within us. And look, I come from a very, I come from a very staunch Christian background, you know, very strong, staunch. And I had, I have always seen God as, Growing up, I've seen God as the external being that is up there in heaven. Even as the Bible keeps saying to everyone that the kingdom doesn't come by observation, but it is within you. We still don't get that. So says the Bible that we read. We still don't get that. We still want to see this external God who's going to come with a white horse one day with long beard most likely a white person. <laughs> That's how we've been taught, right? So the inner being, that is where God resides. That is the kingdom within. That is your sacred space, your inner being, the true you, the source. Yeah. So, so, so are you saying that it's that kind of thing where when you discover that everything that you need is within God and everything that you need for you to thrive lies within. And that prepares you for your workplace. That prepares you for the bigger challenges outside. So you, I, I know you, you do a lot of meditation and, and yoga. It. What are other kinds of things that people could do? Because you know, um, some, somebody like very recently, said something that was so, so eye-opening. She said, when you, you run a marathon in your flip-flops, you're going to stumble and fall. It's going to be very hard for you. I love that. And it's not because you can't run, but it's because you're wearing the wrong shoes. I love and that. And you're going to other people um, that they have prevented you from being the best runner. So would you say that something like that could apply maybe in our lives? That where is in, a perfect we've analogy. Got the skills. Yeah, we've got the skills, but we get into the workplace and we don't, we don't thrive, we don't succeed. What do you think could be, you know, could be done? Because um, like I said, Nina, um, I'm for the youth. <laughs> so, so um, I, we needed to start where we started to just give a foundation that you can never fix anything outside of yourself. Everything is within. So one of the things, number one, 
that one would have to do as a tool of, or as um, in terms of your analogy, getting proper socks and, 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 and running shoes for the race. Uh, you need to wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, if you used to waking up at six, and when you're waking up at six, normally you take 30 minutes to wash, 30 minutes to get ready, eat your breakfast, and I then you 30, mm -hmm. 30 minutes to wash, five minutes. Yes. Well, she's How many? I'm joking. <laughs> I didn't want people to say that one doesn't wash because my showers are so swift. <laughs> So, so um, here's the thing. Can you not afford yourself 30 minutes before that? So wake up at half past five and just wake up to be with yourself. Have your quiet time. What do you do in this quiet time to equip yourself? You know, when you speak of meditation, people think you're talking oh, mm, to an extent, yes, there are masters and all that. But people cannot uh, relate because one of the reasons is that I, this thing, I've tried it. I mean, I keep thinking, and as I go, mm, I'm thinking, oh, there's bread. Oh, I'm thinking that I'm not supposed to be thinking, and, <laughs> and no. all of that. Yeah. And unfortunately, so Doing. You've got to know. Here's the uh, thing. It's a how to practice. Meditate. Meditation is like driving a car. You cannot take uh, a 16-year-old or 19 who Vico. I could not, I'll, I'll make an example, you know, Vico. I could not just take Vico and throw him in the car and say, drive us to Deben without him having had a lesson or some form of, or writing a learner's license, reading the signs and all that. So it's a practice. Or even when he's got that, I still cannot say, okay, you're ready to drive alone to, to buy groceries because the traffic cops need to see a license from a driver. So meditation is much like that. You need to be kind to yourself right? And understand that meditation is not an art of stopping the thoughts, but is an art of finding yourself and that balance through the thoughts, such that the thoughts come in and you are able to allow them out without following them. You, you, you get to that point where you are able to dismiss them out. They come in, they don't bother you anymore, so you focus on your breathing, like, I'm telling you, you keep, I, it took me a good seven to nine months to master the art of meditation. And I never stopped it. I did it every day. Sometimes it, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but I got the hang of it at some yes. point. And when I got the hang of it, it got better and better and better. So there are different types of meditation. Uh, that leads you to the same place. You can do uh, meditation that's that's got music or that is prompted by someone guiding you, guided meditation. At least you are listening to someone, right? Uh, it's not like you, you are fumbling or anything. That 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 person guiding following you. Following those prompts. Yes. Following the prompts and the breathing and all that. It's much better, especially for a beginner, even though guided meditation works at all levels. I'm not saying it's just for beginners. Yeah. Um, there's, um, I mean, what I love the most now that I do every morning is I'm able to literally sit down, clear my space, clear the energy um, and start just breathing in and out and going into the meditative state at any way. This is anywhere at any point. I, I have practiced enough to, be able to. to get there when I need to, but every yeah. morning I do it. And this puts me into alignment with my inner being. Hmm. I feel anchored 
when I, I, I get up from my meditation. And and it doesn't have to be more than 10 minutes. Yeah. And as you go out to face the day, um, does that help you to deal with challenges, to it, deal with people, to deal with drivers on in the fact, road? You see challenges differently. You see challenges from a different perspective because mm. you have dealt, you have removed the resistance. What meditation does, it removes resistance. Because remember, when there's a problem here, I build my own resistance of it. And maybe I have a resistance towards this uh, boss of mine or colleagues or the lecturer uh, or whoever else. And it keeps building. The momentum goes up and then it's I, they frustrate me. I can, you know, I can say all sorts of nasty words about them. But what meditation does, you cannot reach that state and still have the resistance. It releases the resistance. So by the time you walk out and you see the boss, you see them for who they are. And you are dealing with the problem internally, not externally, as we said earlier. Ah. Yeah, and, and this doesn't have to take anything more than uh, 10 minutes, 15. I've gone to a whole lot of minutes. I need to stop myself sometimes a day on a meeting. No, but, 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 I but, love the state. So, so sometimes it's important to do that because if you think about it, we've got 24 hours in a day. How much of those 24 hours do we really give to ourselves? Because also, if we say, okay, through sleeping, when you're sleeping, so you haven't dealt with your own stuff. So no, you haven't. in the 24 hours, do you really say, uh-uh, this one hour is for me? Because remember, some of the time you give it to people on TV, you watch like eight and hours. And it of is best, Matilyn, um, for the purpose of setting up your day. The mm. tone of your day, it is best to do it early morning, first thing when you wake up. It's best and to do that. A lot of people say, you know, especially if you're running a business or if you're working, uh, it's important that you wake up early so that you can plan your day, do all the things that you need to do before you really face the day. So what you're saying is really, really um, important. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the other tool... Uh, unless you still want to ask anything around meditation. No, actually, when you mentioned Biko and the car, one of, you know, one of my favorite gurus once said, um, so, so what we tend to do is, you know, when you think about a car, you get into a car that you've never driven before, but you've seen what they do. You know, they put the key, they, their pedals, and you, you know, and you get lucky, you can drive, and oh, it's safe. You know, you can touch here and there. However, you don't really know how it operates. You just get lucky that you can move from point A to point B. Point and he said, it's the same thing with human beings. Just because we are growing, we are eating, reproducing, and just responding to life does not necessarily mean that we are living. It simply means we just. I love it. that so much. I often say, I did not come here to merely exist. I did not come here to merely exist. Many I am people. here to live life fully, yeah. abundantly, to learn, to have my contrast, which are uh, those moments that are not so pleasant learn from them because they teach me what it is that i want you know i did not come here to just wake up go to work come back to sleep there's life there's life i i i need to be excited about things i need but, to and you have to be, you have to be the driver as you opposed cannot, to yeah yeah you cannot other, be a passenger you cannot be passive. if you don't drive it other people will drive it for you. Absolutely. If you don't have your own life, you are going to go with them. Anybody can tell you what to do and you just, because you don't have your own car, right? Yes. Yes. 
so 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 uh, yes the, oh i wanted to say on meditation the workplace in any way i want you to take us to the to yes. the so so angiti what you are doing now with this meditation with uh, um the then the next thing is your gratitude jenna this is my workshop in the morning i and this relates so much to our everyday life at work at school and so on after I do my meditation, um, I do a gratitude journal. List 10 things that you're grateful for. 10 things. That is a big shift from whatever space you were in. It shifts you to a space where you look at things differently. Uh, what, what do I mean? I mean, if I say I'm grateful for um, my job, I'm grateful mm. for the fact that, um, uh, oh, I'm grateful for my comfortable home. I, I'm grateful for awesome sleep that is restful. But here's a trick. You always have to put a because. Because we can just write a gratitude journal. I'm grateful for my salary. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful. Not, yes, you're grateful. But if you want a bigger impact, yeah, yeah, I would say I'm grateful for my friendship with Matsile because it enhances my life because she brings so much uh, knowledge, joy, and just a different perspective into my life every day. I'm grateful for my body because it is well nurtured. It looks beautiful because it carries me everywhere where I need to be because it is healthy. You know, that because kind of expands things, you know, so, and and, and at the end you say, thank, I you, love, thank you. Yeah. I love it because you know what, anyway, because you can say, Today, you, you're grateful for your body because of this. And then tomorrow, you're grateful again for your body because oh, yes. of this. Absolutely. I love that. Content I love changes. You know, I'm grateful for, for health because it is a gift of life. It allows me to be. It allows me, I mean, my senses, my body, my organs, they function well. And there's so much to be grateful for. You can never run out of that. When I started the practice, I thought, oh, 10. I am uh, 12, 10. And now I find myself passing the list. I have to say, yo, time to go to work. Let me stop. So, uh, and, and then with all of them, when you say them out loud, you say, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're thanking God. You want to say you're thanking the universe. That's also good. You're just thanking that higher being that resides within you for all of this because you don't take anything for granted. Now, mm. then you are ready, you are ready. There are many other things you could be doing. You could, um, one of the other things that just put me into great alignment is music. Uh, you know, baby, it's you, you're the one I love. I dance to myself, the I one me. myself. you know? Yes. <laughs> And, and, and you don't have to know how to sing, like yes, that. <laughs> yeah, you, you can just listen and dance my own. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And, yeah. and things like music. Um, I love doing having my coffee and doing the gratitude steps, just going thank you, thank you, thank you with every step because sometimes we're not conscious. Um, we just live by by coincidence. And we do mm. things, we take things for granted. But when when I consciously take my coffee during my, work, my, my workshop and walk out in the yard barefooted most times on my grass and that, and just every step say thank you as I sip my coffee. Thank you, thank you, thank now you. I, now I know why when I own you. Then I know, you know. Uh, <laughs> Tell so, secret, my friend. Secret, we're keeping my secret now. We want those secrets. So one, one of also some of the wise men, one wise man said, when you are grateful, when you say those gratitudes, 
you get more to be thankful for. So the more you say thank you, you get more things to be thankful for. It the more the you magic. complain, the more it is the magic. Remember, the one day we will tackle complain about. One so, day we will tackle the law of attraction in its entirety. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you, yeah. you meet no one but yourself out there. Yeah. The more you're grateful, the more you get. Wow. You meet so, yourself out there. So this is why yeah, we fixing, you, I'm, bring, I'm taking you back to the workplace. You meet yourself out there. So if you go that's to what the I'm workplace, saying. Yes. And, you know, you go to the workplace, you get this bully. Hey, that's why. So many this is why are. I'm taking you through the whole thing. Process. To, because it's not about the workplace itself. It's about you. You need to fix you. And when you go out there to work, when things start changing, relationships start looking differently, you know it's the work that you're doing. And it is just law that it will happen like that. So I'm taking you through all of this because it's important to do the work on your own before you go out to the workplace or before you go out to school or varsity or whatever that is. It's important to just shut down the noises they, uh, those we say, oh, they hate me, or oh, this and that. Uh, it's important to shut all of that down for you to be able to walk back into that situation differently. Can I tell you something? Everyone sees you for what you are. So you cannot be shallow and be living from your chest and not your core and think that people will respond. They see you for what you are. And when you start working on yourself, you radiate all of that. And everything outside of you responds to who you are. You meet yourself from everything that respond, that, that reflects back on so you. Everything everyone. reflects who you are. Yeah, yeah. So if we really started to do this, when at a young age, then we'd probably get to a point where we don't really need to fix ourselves, but just to be, and just, just to, to be. know that this is who we are, and just to no be. need to even fix because we've been living. So, age abandoned. So it means this has to start even from a very young age, where we teach kids that they're okay as they are. But how, as you then, are. how how do we then shut down the volume of the external world? telling the child who they are, how they should be, how should, so, what they should So say. one of because the things that, about- that's, that's exactly what is creating so many problems. And, and these kids are very intelligent. So on one end, they're told something, but they feel that no, but this is who I am. And now they have to go through a journey of having to fix all of this. So how do we save them? I think, I think one of the, mysteries of life is the whole hey, so it's a good thing. mysteries hey, man. yeah the whole uh phenomenon of parenting why are you a parent to your kids because as they go through their formative stages and or foundational whatever you know all those stages the kids, in fact, comes ready, but then they meet contrast as they grow. Then they question themselves and they are bullied and all of that. What is your role as a parent? You need to be a parent who is in so much alignment and true to who you truly are so that the child, kids always emulate their parents. If a child sees you, this is why you are a parent and one of your functions or your duties is to guide. Uh, and, and you're guiding not because these kids don't know it. Remember, they are a soul that came fully loaded and they know everything. But That's you can true. only impact them positively when you yourself are aligned. Or you are going to instill more fear and more of this and more of that. So we need to be able to, to find ourselves first. 
you know, before you even respond, before the, when the chat comes in, okay, they, they bullied me, so-and-so did this to me, or they took this or whatever. You need to be able to say, if you're not um, in the right space to respond I'm, I'm, then. In our time, I can't believe that time flies so <gasps> I know, I know, I know. There's one last aspect that we need to do though. Yeah. So you need to be able to say, okay, hold on and okay, let's talk about it now. Calm down, I'm coming to you. But by that, you are also connecting with yourself so that whatever you say, because what we say, you know, I like the phrase that go, we language ourselves to disempowerment. Oh. So you need to be a parent who is, well equipped with all the tools to be able to deal with it. And unfortunately, yeah, but can I tell and you something? It's by virtue of us being parents that we, we've got all the answers. We don't. We, we can't assume that we are the right influencers because that, that's also another problem where you by virtue of being a parent, you can tell. You cannot be a know-it-all. You can so when you're a pilot, a parent who's aligned, who's conscious, uh, you are able to guide and able to say to your child, "How do you feel? What do you think?" You, you know, address it in a way that would really make an impact. But then again, not only parents. Some some kids. I mean, it's not their fault that the parent is not there. There's always someone. However listen we all come equipped we are all in a journey a two-month-old a 58 year old you could find a two-month-old who's much older than a 50 who's much evolved than a 58 year old you know so all i'm saying is that the, 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 the source the, the, the two-year-old comes from source and the source being god fully equipped sure. So the, the, I, I would shy away from being too scared because uh, also we, we just need to guide. We just need to be there to guide. Outside of that, trust me, these kids are fully equipped as long as they're growing in a safe environment and they have someone to talk to. People, if there are real issues, people don't go to therapy. Please take your kids to therapy. It works. <laughs> And, and stuff like that. You think, but, yes, mm. you're making me think about something, Nani, when you're talking about age and you know, numbers. I'm just thinking now, would maybe one to two feet, there must be a world or some country that's for 50 year olds and above. Mm. Huh? What do you think? Yeah. For yeah. 50 year olds, <laughs> we go somewhere and we live there. And then we leave young people to recreate, to innovate. No. Because I'm telling you, a lot of things we can't unlearn. Um, they're so ingrained in us that it's very difficult to change. But a lot of problems are because of us oldies in, in, you know, insisting that this is how things are done. This is what needs to be done. And you look at these young people, 20 something olds, 30 year olds, they're extremely intelligent, but they are not to learn. learn. We cannot be shipped yeah, to a lot the planet. There's a lot to learn from the young ones. <laughs> How are we going no, to ship learn and evolve? Don't ship the, the young, no, don't ship the young ones must stay and fix the, the world age. They don't want to be yeah, fixing. Fix what? Why, why, do you fix why do you mess no, up and expect Don't ship us, things? my friend. Don't ship us to a different planet. We need the young ones to equip us but as well. Much. Because remember, we are eternal beings. I'm still most likely going to come back as a oh, young no, one. to come back evolved. Yes. yes. <laughs> so going yeah, back true. to the workplace, mm. um, there's, there's also one tool that I really, really like. Uh, and it's called the, the uh, list of positive aspects. Right? I've got this uh, very hostile environment that I'm working in. And I literally go there because I need my salary. And not only that, I 
I'm even attending therapy because I'm just not coping. It's too toxic, or whether it's the boss or colleagues or whatever. So one of the things, if one is going through that, one of the tools that really, really, really work well um, is a list of positive aspects. Whatever your issue is, say, just give me a, a, a scenario or an, a, a, a subject that could be. Um, let, let's say in the workplace, um, there's a boss that criticizes everything that you submit, whether you do your project on time or, you know, they just criticize, they find oh. the fault. Here's a beat who will tell you, I've been with this company for 40 years before you were even born. We don't do it like that here. And you just, Pete is always walking around with this red pen. Who, who, who did you say? Pete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. Come back. So Pete is always walking around with this red pen. Whatever you do, you know, because of culture, number one, he's been there for 40 years and he's refusing to evolve, you know? So culture just doesn't click and he's just not liking anything that you come up with. It's a new age thing or new whatever. You think you know better. So one of the things, because you know you still want to work here, uh, you need to work here, but this thing has just become such a toxic situation for you. The list of positive aspects then takes you out of that. What do I mean? You, you deliberately bring yourself to a more positive space in your workplace, how so? When you wake up in your workshop, if that's one of the things you, you need to be doing. There are a whole lot of things you do in the workshop uh, and we will talk about them as time goes on um, when, when God allows. So you write a list of the things that are actually beneficial to you from Pete. Pete has institutional history or knowledge. Click, that's a positive. Uh, wow, Pete is always early. I could learn a thing or two from that. He has his coffee outside before he starts work because he's got enough time. Three. Uh, when Pete criticizes me, then next I time I make sure that I do my work like thoroughly. So yeah, I learn I, more. I do my work thoroughly and I learn more. What is this doing to the pit monster? Eating the pit monster bit by bit. We are dismantling it. Uh, Pete, um, what? Just say something else uh, that is positive. Um, so Pete makes me remember to align my day before I leave because I remember to prepare myself. That's I know positive. So Pete helps me to remember to uh, align myself, do my meditation so that when I meet him, uh, I'm okay. Whatever he says. Yes. When, I, Pete, when Pete criticizes everything I do, he does allow me to sit with him and correct it. So when I do not resist it, I get what he's saying. And it helps me to make sure that I don't relax. And when I'm the best and um, the business can't do anything without me in that aspect, then I become indispensable for the company. I become indispensable. Yes. And, and you know, you, you just oh, like... Funny. Yeah positive aspects about that particular situation that is heavy on you. Yeah. Because so can I tell you something, my friend? Like, Every coin has two sides to it. 
every coin has two sides to it. You can always find something about whatever. There's always something. Yeah, there's always and something. And when you do that, you are dismantling this energy that overwhelms you bit by bit. And I you love, win. I love that. Shoo! This was amazing. This was truly, truly insightful. And I'm really hoping that our young people out there um, will take something with them and just understand the importance of knowing who they are and really accepting and loving themselves exactly as they are, because there's nothing wrong with them. And yeah. take that into the workplace or wherever they may be going, uh, because there is more that comes from within that those are your ways. Most from importantly, mm. most importantly, um besides living unapologetically and and moving from the uh, pers perspective of knowing who they are they need you see it's different when you say this is who i am i am stubborn and i know it all and there's nothing you can this is who i am they just have to deal there's a difference between that and moving from an authentic place and an authentic place you find when you are in alignment, then you, the ego is no longer there that says, this is who I am, that it's no longer there. This, when you say, this is me, you show up, you don't even have to open your mouth. Your presence is enough. To the room. This is so powerful. So the biggest word for today's session is alignment. Yeah, alignment to who you are, because I'm sure Namunkulukulu comes to bless you, I got told you, because you're not, it's not, you're not you. You're there, you're there. Because you are yeah. born in that way, so you don't even get those blessings, because you're looking you for blessings. If you get, that is positive, Bushai Senena. Bro, you did why, not yeah, I got told you, because yeah. you're not being yourself, you're not being true to yourself. So, I would like, yeah, thank you so much. And I'm really hoping that we can do this again because topic we which are not for today. And I didn't I didn't even want to go there, but but thank you so much. Um I really enjoyed, I really learned a lot from you. And I know that um just a little bit out of this, you know, every somebody will take something that will really change their their lives. And <laughs> so much thank you and and have a it's good a pleasure. Day. thank you so much for the platform this is so important you have no idea you have no idea you're doing great work thank you're doing you. god's work <laughs> thank you so much so i'm aligned do i get it absolutely <laughs> absolutely my friend <laughs> mm, thank you no thank you yeah. so much thanks yeah we'll be yeah mali your topic lay away mali your topic lay Anytime, anytime. <laughs> yeah, but but thank you for 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 really sharing and and for teaching us um, uh, these gems of life, and we are taking those uh, with us into the thank next step. All class, class, I even know five a.m. exam. Yebo, yebo, five a.m. club. <laughs> okay. Thanks, right. my darling. Bye bye. Okay. Okay then, bye. Bye.